for me, if a non jata teacher is not transmitting transmitting grace, then then the message, no matter how intellectually sound, will never resonate. My teacher speaks of two awakenings, the dry non and the wet kundalini shakti. I wonder if non is too devoid of the devotional side of practice, which helps to soften the heart and open the devotee to the energetic side of awakening. Even the great Yanis, Nisargadatta and Ramana, would have elaborated pujas and devotional chanting at the ashram. Yeah, nice. I think a, West, a lot of Westerners don't understand the devotional side that can happen in India. I think it's very challenging, challenging to our sensibilities in the West. Um, um, and um, so maybe that sometimes gives the wrong impression in non-duality that it's just a emptiness awakening it's not the love side so to me there can be two different types of awakening there can be the emptiness and then there can be the love awakening and they can happen independently of each other or they can happen simultaneously the emptiness is the empty looking but there is nothing here looking i think this data would call it the um the witnessing and then there can be the love side which is the beingness coming forward and when those two are united so the witness and the beingness are united you know it's not just witnessing but it's the witnessing the he would call it the supreme witnessing but the witnessing and the being simultaneously it's absolute love and emptiness and they're one and the same thing so you could call it like the impersonal i am and the empty looking coming together and the witness is like a bridge between the no thing which is the emptiness and then the love which is everything and this is who we are right now everybody is this empty looking and then this love, this beingness, this everything. And they come together. So the empty looking, or what he would call the supreme witnessing, is not a witness that's from a subject or a place. It's no place. It's in no place. And it's all things. So there's not something witnessing something else. That's the activity that happens beforehand. The witnessing, the consciousness is in all things. So there is nothing conscious, there's nothing witnessing. And then the all things are kind of, you could say, beingness. And they come together and then it's this empty fullness, which is love. And everybody is that. Everybody is the empty looking that what creates suffering is the identification with the person and the identification with time bound reality that I am something that I am a body mind that I am emotions and from that comes personal doership the idea that there is somebody doing inside this body or that body and it's against life rather than the from the perspective of non-duality, of no seeing everything, everything is a reflection of itself. All is a reflection of itself. Yeah, I read this from Ananda Mahima. This is so beautiful. I think I've read it before, but let me just read it again. She's so divine, and so few people seem to know about her. Rima. When somebody dis when someone disapproves of something we have done, 
God appears in the form of that disapproval, as if in that disapproval it is that God ultimate reality who is manifested. If someone talks in our favour, that appears in the form of that compliment. If someone expresses doubt about us or talks in the language of contradictions, there also is that, meaning God, only. There is nothing anywhere but our own self. Everywhere it is that self alone. God alone. It is only Bhagavan, God, the Lord, in every form. He can appear in the form of either approval or disapproval. The question says, how do we secure bhakti devotion? Go and sit under a tree. She means go to satsang. That's what she means by that. He, she has everything and gives what is suitable to a person according to his own lineage. That great godly person will give you what you need. And what I get the sense when he, she means, like, go and sit under the tree, she calls it, like, go and sit with a great one. She means, like, go and sit in presence. Like, she does also mean go to satsang, like, that's her lineage, so that's what she's going to te teach. So go to a teacher, but she means also that which is a mirror to your own nature. Is what's reflecting your own nature and that that's not including you know going to therapy or working on the personal self although I totally recommend doing that and I think it's really not wise what she's suggesting is sitting in presence is being in devotion to God she calls it different things yeah I think in the West, though, it's, I think in India, it's the same, but, you know, working on the person, doing yoga, doing therapy, having a good conceptual understanding of self is important to calm the person down. But then at the same time, you need to have this strict, um, this strict um, commitment to going beyond all of that. This really is going beyond the person. What is it in the, which the person appears in? Yes, it's great to do all these things for the person and to work out the person. But the most important part, all your past, is to see beyond the person. Where is this beingness and this alive presence? Who is that? Where is that? In every moment basking in that, in every experience there is this empty looking, alive presence. It's right here. What the person can do is it can do very simple things, but um, but keeping in mind that it's not really the person that gets there. And the simple practices are, is putting your attention in beingness, in presence, in I am, or in the empty looking. Um, ma, and under my ma would recommend mantras. Or focusing on the name of God. Basically, what it's doing is it's moving the attention out of the conceptual reality and trying to point it to something deeper. And that's that's different from therapy, from thinking about yourself, from energetic release. Although I'm not saying it's 
better it's just different that is all working on the person and in a way this is calming the person but it's um it's trying to point to something different it's trying to invoke the stillness that is the nature But in saying all of that, just holding in mind that everything that you do is an idea of you, is in ideas. So moving your attention back to the present moment is an idea pulling itself out of ideas. Just recognizing that. Beingness, what you truly are, is always still. Always present. It's not a movement. It's not something you get. It's here right now. It is you as you. <laughs> 